Hi guys, I'm Daddy Freeze, convener of the Free the Sheeple Movement and leader of the Free Nation in Christ. I greet you and I bring glad tidings. I did say I was going to be live preaching from the scriptures four times a week. And this is my second time this week, even though we're gone almost halfway um, through the week. Um, people are saying, check, in my, check my DM, please. Don't send me anything that, was, that would disturb me or stress me. Uh, I beg you, please. And don't ask me for favors. I'm also, I'm also looking for people who help me with favors. Okay? Brother, this is your message. I don't understand. Just respond there. Okay. And guys, you need to stop calling me if you don't have any important issues. Okay. So let us go straight into the teaching. Today we're talking about making scriptural sense. Let us start with a prayer. Heavenly Father, I thank you so much for everything you've done in our lives. I thank you for giving us the opportunity to gather in your name. I ask that your mercies be upon us and that you direct us always in Yahushua's name, I pray. Amen. So um, yesterday I did a teaching explaining the four translations of scripture we have the easy ones the literal god created adam and eve god literally made two people literal the moral also very easy um what's the moral of the story thou shall not kill thou shall not steal thou shalt love um you have the story of joseph in the bible leading israel um out of egypt sorry yeah, taking care of his brothers um as they come to beg for food uh, what's the moral of your of the story be good those are the easy parts then we have the more technological or should i say technical aspects of scripture that is the allegorical and the anagogical let me explain for the benefit of those who um, missed yesterday's class let me explain what an allegory is a story in which characters and or events are symbols representing other events ideas or people allegory has been come on in literature a very good example I gave yesterday was George Orwell's Animal Farm. Many people would allegorically translate Moses leading the Israelites out of Egypt as Christ leading the church to the promised land, which is the hereafter. Another very good example is the allegory of um what's his name the representation of christ in the old testament genesis chapter 14 melchizedek as being christ and melchizedek is an allegorical representation of christ he is taking the form of christ but in another narrative then we have the anagogical meaning where we have a deeply rooted um hold on let me close my windows because the music outside is still tuning in all right i don't want any copyright issues these days everybody everybody body of work now copyright so let me explain what the anagogical means the anagogical is a bit more complex taken from the greek word anagogy meaning to climb or to go up the anagogical is a method of mystical or spiritual 
interpretation of statements or events, Ex especially in this instance, scripture. I hope I'm able to carry you guys along. So, when you have the um, anagogical interpretation, uh, we're talking about, let me give you an example of, of a scripture now, and I want to see if you guys can, um, oops, where did I, I thought I pasted it here. Okay, can you all open scriptures, Ephesians chapter 5, verse 27. I actually need people to do this exercise with me. Husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her that he might sanctify her, having cleansed her by the washing of the water with the word, so that he might present the church to himself in splendor without spot or wrinkle or any such. Now, I'm going to take people from the comment section. This scripture, I hope you have it opened. I want you to interpret it to me literally, morally, allegorically, and anagogically. So, who wants to go? Send me a request. This is a Bible class. I want to see how much you have learned and how willing you are to open your mind. If you want, do you want to give it a try? Don't worry, nobody's judging you. It's just for you to give it a try. If now, whilst I day here now, all of the comment section go down full. Yes, they had 75 people requesting to join the live. Today I have two. It shows where our interests lie. Who wants to give it a try? Ify, I've sent you a request. Ify, you declined. No, 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 no. You cannot decline. No, you have to be here. Everybody saying no sabi Bible. But now they go to church every Sunday. What you now they go there, go do. I explained what the literal is. The literal is. Okay, there are four types of biblical translation. There is the literal, the moral, the anagorical, sorry, the allegorical and anagogical. So I explained what the four types of translations were. The first one is very easy. It's literal. Husbands love, I, I shouldn't, let, let me not do it in this, in this scripture because then I've, I've given you the, the answer. So the scripture is, no, when you join live, you will read the scripture to me and then we will try. Yesterday, 90% of my callers were women. Now there's no woman here. Okay, Chi, Chi Gozie Ibekwe, the only woman. Let me call her. This. Okay. Sorry, I think it's back now. All right, cute Nikki, let me invite you. So, I read a piece of scripture. Okay, Nikki. Good morning. Good, good evening. Good evening, my sister. How are you doing? I'm fine, sir. So I just wanted to pray for me because this is my first time. Ah, uh, you will call back later. Now we are doing scripture study, not prayer. Okay, my darling oh. sister. Okay. Uh -huh. All right. My network is bad, but I'm but it's 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 okay now. So nobody wants to try. Everybody's telling me to check my DM. What are people saying I should check inside DM? Simply Vic. Hey, bro. Are you ready? No, I'm not. Though. I'm just going home. Oh, I'm okay. The bus. I'm at the bus station. 
Oh, okay, okay. I thought you were ready to go because you are you are one of the only people that could help right now. We're trying to find translations of scripture. Oh uh, no! Well, let me get home. All right, get home, get home, get home. Then. Well, I'll still be I'll still be a part of your. I'm, I'll still I'm still watching those. So okay, still... okay, what, okay. What am I even showing? What am I showing the ground set? This is weird. <laughs> all right, Vic. Take care. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. You're showing the ground. It's all yeah. good. Hi, my sister. So, are you ready to try? Yes, to try what? <laughs> ah, now wow. <laughs> now wow. Who do us like this? If now you oh, let the chain now. What was the question? I didn't even hear the first part of it. Yeah. Oh, oh, I said, you know, I've been trying to teach since yesterday that there are four types or four parts of biblical translation. There is the literal there's the moral, there's the yeah. allegorical, and the anagogical. Yeah. Yeah. So I read a scripture, and I want people to give me the four translations of that particular scripture, taking into cognizance the literal, moral, allegorical, and anagogical. Okay, I can try. What was the scripture? Can you... All right. The scripture is... Um, hang on a second. The scripture is taken from the book of Ephesians, chapter 5, verse 22, all the way through 27. Let me read it to you because I know you're busy. 25 to 27, actually, not 22 to 27. Ephesians 5, 25. <clears throat> Husbands, love your wife as Christ loved the church <clears throat> and gave himself up for her that he might sanctify her having cleansed her by the washing of water with the word, so that he might present the church to himself in splendor without spoil or wrinkle of any such. So, <clears throat> let us start with the literal meaning. <clears throat> Vic, I can't hear you. Your voice is gone. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, I muted it because of the sound of the background. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Husband, husband, love your love your wife. As Christ loves the church. Two seconds. Two seconds. <clears throat> Sorry, I ate some asso, so I think the pepper went the wrong way. I'm here now. Can you hear me now? Clearly, bro. Alright, let's go. Yeah. So the literal meaning of that is quite very simple. Uh, it's a direct instruction. It's literal. It's not a suggestion. It's not an advice. <clears throat> husband. <clears throat> husband, love your wife. As Christ loved the church. So there's a reason for that. If mm -hmm. you do that, you will get X, Y, and Z. Okay. If you do that, you'll be honoring Christ. Mm. Because Christ gave his life. Now, what about so the moral? Can... You see, the literal. The moral. Yes. You have to separate the literal from the moral. Yeah, the moral part of it is basically love. Okay. Now... The moral part of it is basically love. Okay. Yeah, sorry, go ahead. Now, the allegorical meaning. Um, allegorical is when you substitute something that doesn't mean the same thing. Uh, that one is tricky. <laughs> You know, sometimes something can be literal, and there is no such, it's not such allegorical, if that makes sense. Christ loved because the church, saying, and he gave himself up for her. That's where the clue is. He loved the church, and he gave yeah. himself up for her, yeah. that he might sanctify Christ, her. Christ is, so yeah. Christ never got married to the church, yeah, but he... Like It's like substituting, yeah, it's like, it's like when you're comparing A to B. They both means the same thing. They both carry the same weight. But if you look at it in this light, this is what it still means. So at the end of the day, it's a win-win. And the final one, the anagogical meaning. What's anagogical again? I can't remember. <laughs> All right. Anagogical <laughs> is like the spiritual meaning. Um, uh, when, when, when you're yeah, dealing with, when you're putting 
future events into consideration, like the afterlife, um, you know, the mystical or spiritual meaning of this? Uh, of course, if you're looking at it from the fact that these are words of Christ, and his words are yes or ye and amen. So if you're looking at that in the present, in the future tense, <laughs> There is no controversy. It's literally what it means. And at the end of the day, it what will count for or against you in the life after this or in the life beyond, if that makes sense. Yes. Because these are words from Christ. This is not Paul talking now. This mm. is not David. Mm. This is Christ. So mm. as followers of Christ, that's why if you read Matthew 23, uh, Matthew chapter 13, verse 12, if you listen to my teachings, you want to have an abundance of knowledge. And even if anything you think you know, we take it away from you. Awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. You tried. Like four in one. That, that verse alone is 4 in 1. Yeah, that's what I was trying to achieve. So let me bring somebody else and let me see who else. I'm going to give another scripture and let us see. Because the reason why I'm doing this exercise is they don't too lie to people. So people no can't know anything again. They just they use people's head. So let people actually start to understand what the anagogical is and who is giving this anagogical meaning. Is it the lies your pastor told you or because you have scriptural understanding that tallies with history and um, the sociological circumstance in which the scripture was written. So thank you so much, Vic. God bless. Um, who else is ready to go? Who's ready to go? I need somebody else. Big shout out to Vic. Who else is ready to go? I'll give you another scripture. Who's here? Who's here? Who's here? Who? Hello, bro. Hi, Daddy, Hi, how are you doing? Shit, I know you were going to keep me in there. But you sent a request, so are you ready? Yeah, I sent a request. Uh, are you ready or you're afraid? Yeah, I'm ready. All right. So I'm going to give you a scripture from the book of Revelation now. And you're going to give me the literal, the moral, the an allegorical, and an anagogical meaning. Revelation 19, 7 to 9. Let us rejoice and exalt and give him the glory. For the marriage of the Lamb has come and his bride has made herself ready. It was granted her to clothe herself with fine linen, bright and pure. For the fine linen is the righteous deeds of the saints. So, what's the literal meaning of this scripture? Daddy, please, I won't lie to you. I don't have the literal. That one is that verse is a little bit deep. I don't have it. <laughs> All right, bro. No problem. No problem. No problem. We'll be doing more of this because it's one thing for me to just come and be preaching and everybody be nodding their head like they listen, and then you ask them small question like this, everybody don't be faint. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Only six people. Chai, chai. Okay, I see bright Kalu. Let me try bright Kalu. Aside from Bright Carl, let me also invite Jesse Trend. I'm on no wonder Pastor De Uza Una Chopo. Ha! Shay Fumi Yusef joined. Now, of course, if they like now, if you say, write a letter, 1,000 words about your little chair, everywhere go fool. All right, we've got somebody here. Hello, good evening, sir. Hi, Jesse. Are you ready? Yeah, um, let if me it, try. Let me try. Woo! Wow. <laughs> A lady who is not here for the gossip. It's not like we don't do gossip. We also do, but let's do scripture. Now, now when for, to gossip, like, will not bring me to don't worry, I'll bring you this school. night. This night is going to be hot. 
<laughs> four types of scripture okay, literal moral allegorical anagogical here's the scripture revelation okay. 19 7 to 9 okay. let us rejoice and exalt and give him the glory for the marriage of the lamb has come and the bride has made herself ready it was granted her to clothe herself with fine linen bright and pure and the fine linen is the righteous deeds of the saints so let us start with literal what is the literal meaning of this i think the literal meaning of this is um marriage is sacred to me and uh, um it means when uh i think two people come together i think they should hold um their union um sacred that let, that's what i understand by literal okay now um uh, you were on it but you you see the literal meaning is more or less that when the marriage of the bride comes in the at the end of everything the righteous deeds of the saints would become the fine linen that they would be used to be invited into the marriage ceremony you also have a point with that literal meaning that marriage also is sacred uh because you could use that as a literal translation actually uh and say that marriage is sacred because christ is getting married to the church and uh the church is his bride presented to him flawless uh so this also means that um as the church is going to be flawless to christ so should your marriage also be flawless okay it's a now this is a very deep scripture it's more difficult than the first one that's why i chose it okay what's the moral translation moral means um i think um this i i really don't understand okay okay moral moral um, translation of this scripture the, the, the Bible verse again. okay let us rejoice and exalt and give him glory for the marriage of the lamb has come and his bride has made herself ready it was granted her to clothe herself with fine linen bright and pure for the fine linen is the righteous deeds of the saints moral translation okay, moral. Uh, okay. does anybody else go want ahead, to, to to put to, to to come in no go ahead go ahead i want to bring somebody else but go ahead you've done well with the literal so let's see if we can try with the moral we still have two more okay we've got somebody here hello sir okay. yeah hello good evening sir. all right good evening are you ready to join us on this how are you very well thank you so we're looking for the moral translation of this scripture okay. um, uh, are, you, are you talking about uh, marriage or what? you're not with yeah. us i need somebody who is with us you're not with us like this lady when she came she was ready she understood and work with us so please before you send any request i need to be doing this more often because sometimes i just yes, talk and when i'm done talking nobody everybody will just nod their head and say yeah 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 and then everybody goes so home anytime you're preaching, i'm always with my pen and my bible no you tried you tried you tried the the moral translation is actually very easy it's one word it's purity b all right hello hello hi how are you doing what's your name I'm Kiandra. I'm calling from Canada. How are you? I'm fine, Kiandra. How is Canada? I hope you're ready for us. I'm ready. I've been watching your live for a couple of weeks. Okay. So please help me with the moral translation of that scripture I read. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Give me the moral translation. I didn't get your question. You have to come back again. The moral translation. You know, there are four translations of scripture. 
literal, moral, yeah. allegorical, and anagogical. So I need you to help me with the allegorical, anagogical, and moral. She has given us the literal. Okay. Uh, the verse, what you did not get. Okay, the verse is, let us rejoice and exalt and give him the glory for the marriage of the lamb has come and his bride has made herself ready. It was granted her to clothe herself with fine linen, bright and pure. And the fine linen is the righteous deeds of the saints. So what's the moral translation? Well, I think the moral translation of this is like, from my way, my own way of understanding, that verse was like, I was told that the bride had to be pure, virgin, I guess. I don't know. Something like that. I'm not sure if I'm in the moral way uh, space or not, but I was told the bride had to be pure and a virgin, and then everybody would Okay, okay, her. okay. I, I'll take that from you. All right. The word I'm looking for is purity, pure. Um, just the moral of the story is be pure. Yes. Like the, the bride of Christ, be pure. Okay, so that's the moral interpretation of that scripture. What about the allegorical interpretation? Um, I think these days... Anagorical is uh, like spiritual. Okay. No, that's anagogical. Yeah. I'm asking for the allegorical yeah, first. Okay. Uh, for my own understanding, allegorical, I would say... <laughs> right now, I don't think it is what it was in the Bible before. Because now people get married pure or not pure i i don't know if i'm right or wrong or i'm in the right track mm, you're hovering let me allow my other sister to try okay so your turn now me. let me explain my sister okay. yes you yes we're yeah. waiting for you anagogical right allegorical not anagogical allegorical first then anagogical uh, allegorical, I think, uh, is, um, it's still, uh, it should be the same thing with literal, right? Um, no. now, allegorical is using another character to tell a story, to symbolize. Okay. So, um, the uh, allegorical meaning is... Christ is not going to, in any literal sense, get married to a church. What he is going to do, yeah. this, this is like a poem. It, it, it's like, it's a revelation. It's taken from the book of Revelation. So the church now is the communion of saints. Um, those who have maintained purity from the moral sense. Those who have stayed away from evil, evil in the literal sense. How do you be pure? If you have a white linen like this, make sure you don't drop oil on it. Don't stain your white with oil or blood or dust okay. or mechanic. Do you understand? So Christ literally wants you to stay pure. How do you stay pure? Avoid evil. Do good evil. deeds. Love. You stay pure. The literal. The moral is you need to be pure. The literal is um how do i put it he's coming for the poor, for the pure moral stay pure allegorical they're using the bride the wedding um the fine linen do you understand you're not going to go to heaven with any white cloth the fine linen yeah. is a representation of purity of what we're supposed to be pure of right? what you're supposed to be god bless you and then the final meaning i'm going to hand over to this lady because she started on it what is the anagogical translation of the scripture 
I think it's a spiritual element or a, a spiritual being or try to be, um, um, how do I put it? Uh, what I understand by anagogical is spiritual. Okay. Mm -hmm. So That's here's the spiritual okay. meaning. At the end of days, Christ is going to come. And when he comes, he is going to take with him those who have been found to be pure. The spiritual translation is, there's somewhere he's taking them to. There's somewhere important. This is not speaking of a marriage on earth. Christ is not going to come and marry, redeem church, or winner's chapel, or house on the rock. No. Christ is coming to marry the communion of saints. And how is he going to marry them? It's not going to be a physical marriage. Even though the requirements for you to be part of the church that will be married to Christ are physical. Like, make, make sure your white is not stained. It's physical. Yeah. But when they come, if you read Matthew chapter 25, 31 to 41, for instance, it says, when I come... Yeah. With all the angels, I will separate the goats yeah. from the sheep. The goats I will send to hell. The sheep I will send to the kingdom of my father. So, but that kingdom is not a worldly kingdom. It's a spiritual kingdom. You're not going to go there with your two legs. You're not going to go there with your lovely, uh, um, this lady with the pink. You're not going to go with your uh, bone straight hair. You're not going to go there with your... Um, with your nose ring or no, it's a spiritual place. You're going to go there spiritually. So the spiritual, the anagogical translation of this is there is somewhere at the end of the of our journeys on earth. There is somewhere we're going to that has been likened allegory to a wedding. That for us to go there, literally, we have to be pure. Hmm. And the moral of this story is be pure. I have a question that if we go ahead. To continue. But as humans, how do we stay pure with all the heartbreaks, with all the pain and with everything? I know they say come to God with all your problems. You can wash your sins away every day clean and he forgives us every day. But if, even if you try so hard to be pure, how do you stay pure in the midst of all of these things in this world? You understand where I'm coming from? My question? I'm going to read, I'm going to read a scripture for you to address that as I close. Somebody say stay away from dogs, okay? <laughs> Lucky dogs. Matthew chapter 19. Matthew chapter 19, okay. I want to read from... Uh, verse 23. Then Yahushua I said to his disciples... 23, 2, 3. Okay. Then Yahushua said to his disciples, I tell you the truth. It is very hard for a rich person to enter the kingdom of heaven. I say it again. It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. The disciples were astounded. Then who in the world can be saved? They asked. Yahushua looked at them intently and said, Humanly speaking, it is impossible. But with God everything is possible now this is where our 7 a.m fire ministry prayers misinterpret the scripture and say what god cannot do does not exist it is impossible for a human being to enter the kingdom of god but with god in this particular sense nothing's impossible if you follow him if you believe in him if you ask for forgiveness of sins if you follow the teachings of christ no matter where you're coming from as long as you follow him wholeheartedly he will make you pure. So, um, 
all this, what God cannot do does not exist. They translate it that uh, God can come and give them money. God can get them a better job, a better husband, more children, whatever it is they're looking. No, that's not what the scripture is saying. The scripture is saying cl- with all clarity that it is impossible for a human being to make God's kingdom. Because how can you go through life and remain pure? But with God, all things are possible. Yes. Okay, thank you for that answer. All right. Um, one more scripture. Okay. So we end with this. Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 10. Hebrews 10, 10. Okay. For God's will was for us to be made holy by the sacrifice of the body of Yahushua, who is the Christ for all time. Verse 11. Under the old covenant, the priest stands and ministers before the altar day after day, offering the same sacrifices again and again, which can never take sins away. Verse 12. But our high priest offered himself to God in a single sacrifice for our sins, good for all time. Then he sat down in the place of honor at God's right hand. So through the sacrifice on the cross, you're able to achieve what the blood of bulls and rams could not achieve. You are able to achieve perfection. Okay? You are able to achieve perfection. Perfection. So, um, you're welcome. I hope you learned something. I did. I only do when you're online and on live. I take your advice. I listen to you. And you always got facts. And I really applaud you for that. Thank you for accepting my advice. You are most welcome. Thank you for joining. Thank you, my darling sister. You guys tried. Especially when you are teaching biblically, I really like to join your life whenever you are doing uh, your Bible school. I I really want to learn a lot from you, honestly. I've been following you since 2018. Oh, send me a direct message. Let me follow you back. Send me a direct message. Send me a direct message. Let me follow you back. Okay, sir. Okay, All sir. Right. no problem, sir. And okay, yeah, I take care. Teaching, I, your teaching really opened my eyes. Oh. <laughs> really opened my eyes. Yeah. Mm. Okay, sir. All I right. Stay in Turkey. Yeah, we are in Turkey. So, with my family. All right, then. Take care and God bless you, sis. Thank you very much. Good night, sir. Good night. Yeah. So, for the rest of you, I'll be back at 11 o'clock. Make sure you join me and we'll be doing our normal gisting. But I need you to be as attentive as you are with the gisting when it comes to the Bible study. Gisting no go carry you enter heaven. No, this is not even for you. This is for them. At least you had the mind to even join us. Everybody else was sitting down like this, looking at us from far, saying, hey, okay, when people are done, you tell me. Your teaching is one in a million. I, I, I leave everything to join your teaching. Your oh. Thank you, thank you so much. Thank you so much. And I'm going to make sure we we dish we dish out a lot of this. So guys, look out for me. Eleven o'clock. I'll be there. Join me. We're gonna have fun. We're gonna gist and prepare your gifts because I'll be turning forty six at midnight. So come carrying your gifts. (laughs) All right, sixth of May. I'll be turning forty six. So when you're coming to the live, come with a big smile. Uh Okay. Take care. God bless. See you at 11. Bye-bye, sir.